In this video, we're going to create a more wall systems and lava systems for our level. So here in Houdini, let's here start from this network where I create this wrangle. And what I want to do is I want to use a copy to points and a grid. So my scale is to one by one and set this rows and columns to two as well. So now we have this result. What can also be interesting is either we can go to the Wang decoder and we can enable keep color. So we transfer this color. That could be interesting. So we can visualize more what's going on. Or another way is we could use the color node. And in the color node itself, we have an option for random from attributes. So when you do this, we can fill in here our random name. And now we have visualized what's going on with the rank tiles here. So it can be useful. So it's very visual what's going on. Now with this information here, this is then very useful. Like we can filter out where empty spaces are. We can filter out where connections are. We can filter out where the corners are of a room and so on. So this is a very useful information. Now from here, I also want to do a split node. And again here, I want to split based on when there is a lava part or not. Might as well go here and copy paste this over here. Set this to point. And now we have the part with the lava and without. So we can change that easily. Now from here, I want to actually use these empty spaces. And one thing that I might need, want to change is that I want to continue the empty space here as well, even though it's in lava or not. And in here, I also want to include the border information. So we made that earlier, so I'm just going to click it and we have the border here as well. So now further from here, let's just use a blast node. And we're going to delete some parts so at name equals for example zero and we're gonna have to set this to points as well so then all the empty spaces are deleted so if i would inverse it now we have all these spaces now these parts i want to fuse them together because they're not connected right now and now after fuse they will be connected then transform this place so I'm going to move this up. I have my modular models being placed over here and I want to just move them up. And I think in my case, it's something around 3.5 that I have to move them up. And from here, we can simply extrude this like so. And now we have created this space. We can also, for example, here close the back, like it's closed. Uh, we can also clean up the shape, like right now we have all these squares. We can clean up the shape by using the flatten edges dissolving. So if you plug it in, we now have cleaned up that shape as well. So it can be useful to then get a lower poly count there. Then further from here, what we can do is we can set up an Unreal material. So we're going to have to set in the path. So you can go into in real right click to get the copy reference and then paste the reference in here. Then also further down, if you want to unwrap it, you can, for example, do a simple projection, UV project. So in this case, I'm not really going to unwrap it for my game. It's not needed, but if you want to unwrap it, there are multiple ways of doing this. Now, then I want to merge my geometry with my instances. And for this, I'm going to create two merge nodes. So I have a merge node here and here. So I have a merge node that will take care of instances. So I will name this also instance. And I have a merge node that will take care of the geometry. And these then are the output. So it's important to keep them separate and structured. 
So either you keep them separate in here or you can also have different networks over here in object mode. But if you want to keep everything in sub level, then separate them is recommended. So I'm going to plug in this over here and that. And let's also place a frame around this. Now we can do also do the lava geometry. So then we have to take the other input. And from here, I'm going to use something very similar like I did here. So I'm going to copy this blast node, change the input. Now we have these pieces. Maybe let's also place a node node here so it's easy to visualize them. What I also want to have uh, lava is when I have a bridge. So for example, here I would have a bridge and there would still be lava underneath it. So I'm also going to have to include this information of these pieces. Now, if you're not sure which number this is, we can always start to double check them. So in here, I need the information of these pieces. So these number are number 90 and a bridge is number 86. So in this blast note, I'm going to do copy this name and we're going to continue with then number 86 and the other number is then 17. So again, now I can point out to this uh, tile set here, this image. So number 17 and 86 were like these straight pieces, which I used for a bridge. Then fusing these parts together. So they are one big piece. You can see the color is getting merged and use the dissolving ed edges again. So dissolve. And from here, we can then just use a transform and decide how deep the lava should go. So this would be the level the player plays on and then we can decide how far it should go. And I think something like minus 10 would be okay. Now again here we can use the Unreal Material and also we can do some UV projection on this here as well and that would be finished then. And put a frame around it and plug this in with the geometry. Now I'm going to quickly start up Unreal and set up some of these material instances and then test it out in Unreal as well in how everything is looking. So here in Unreal we have our materials and I'm going to grab some of these materials and link them to my attributes. So here I have my lava, I'm going to right click, copy reference, jump back in Houdini and paste the reference here in the path. And I'm going to do the same here for my balls here. So after that is set up, I'm going to save the asset and regenerate them in real. Simply click rebuild and wait a moment. And as you can see now, we have these balls placed around my level and I have also some of that basic level laying around. Then there are a few things I want to add here. So I want to use these walls that I have and copy them here along this empty space here. So it's nicely closed space. And I also want to have rocks here at the bottom, which I also have a prefab for. So let's start with creating walls around it. And I'm going to start here from the first output from the split again, and I will be fusing it. So plug it in over here. You might as well take this on the side here for a moment. So we have this result is fused together. Then after that, I'm going to use the dissolve edges again. So plug it in over here. And what is interesting here now is that the second slider is a tolerance. And if I put it down to zero, we still have these points on the edge which can be quite interesting in this case to use. So for example, each point would then be presenting a wall. So we can copy a wall here along this line. So what I'm going to do is using a poly extrude. I'm going to extrude this a little bit. So five. And the reason why I'm extruding five is because I know 
one line length is five because my basic input was one by one and I have multiplied it by five. So it's a nice square here. We can also remove the top. So we only have these primitives on the side. Then using facet nodes and in here, we're going to check un unique points. So basically all primitives are now separate. So they are not connected to each other. Then I want to use the primitive node itself. And in here, we're going to enable do transform and we're going to set the scale to zero. Then you can see that the primitives are scaling by itself. So if we would set them zero and zero, zero, we now have these points. Now important here also is the normal direction. So we need to have a normal where the model should face. So actually before I did face it, let's also add here a normal attribute. Set this to point normal. So now we have these normals and here in the primitive, we then remove this over here. So it keeps the normal information. My modular wall will then follow the normal line when it's getting copied. Then again, I want to fuse them together because there are a lot of overlapping points on each other. So I'm going to fuse it. And in the fuse, disable remove repeated vertices and also disable recalculate normals. So it keeps the normal information. Now from here, we're going to have one problem. So if I place walls along all these sides, what would happen if there was a door here or a bridge or another room? So it would just keep placing walls. So I'm going to have to filter out some of these points that are not supposed to be there. So if I have a door, I want to delete the points. Then over here, let's grab this blast node here and copy paste this over here. You can then see that, for example, here, there should not be points because we will have an opening so the player can walk to these spaces. So let's use this information and fuse this. Then using the dissolve edges again. Then I'm going to extrude the shape. I'm also going to extrude this by five. So size five. And I'm going to do another extrude. So I can just copy this extrude and lowering this distance, of course. So you can see that this, uh, this is extruding the whole area. And now I want to use this in a group node. So group and use this here in the bounding options. So let's say points to keep. So I'm going to make sure these are then the final points. And let's use here bounding region, use the bounding object, so the second input. And now all the points that are being selected are then the points that a wall can be placed. So that's just a little cleanup there. So from here, we do, of course, the last node. So we're going to delete the unnecessary points. So points to keep, invert this. Then set up an instancing. So first of all, I like to also add, use an add node and enable the delete geometry put key points. This is sometimes I use this to be, be sure I don't have any other random geometry. I only want points as output. Then I'm going to use a attribute create. And in here, I'm going to call this Unreal Instance. And we're going to make sure setting it to a string and then fill in the path. So in here in Unreal, I'm going to go to my prefab. In here, right click again copy a reference and use this in Houdini. So let's hit it over here. And this is an instance. So let's connect this with the instance attributes here. So that is set up. Let's also adding a frame. So these are then the wall parts. Then here for the lava, I want to add some rocks at the bottom. So we're going to use this information now. And I actually want to start very similar here. So maybe I'm going to put this up higher and go from here. So from this information, 
I'm going to place down a extrude node. So let's use an extrude. And in this extrude node, I'm going to set the distance to minus 5. So I'm going to again create a square shape. Then I also want to restore some of these lines that were equally dividing the spaces. So either you could use a resample here. And then you see we have these spaces, so we could resample, for example, on 5. Then we have restored these spaces. You can also tick resample by polygon edge can be useful. Another way to do this is, for example, after the extrude node, you can use the divide node. And in here, what we're going to do is use the breaker polygon feature. So we're not going to use the convex polygons, but the breaker polygon and set this to 5, 5, 5. And you can see that we basically then have the same result. So that can also be useful. In this case, I might as well also disable the output front. So only have the sides because the rocks will be placed along the sides. And from this point, I'm actually going to do a very similar system that I did over here with the face node and the primitive. So I'm going to just grab these and copy paste this over here. So what will happen is that then each primitive is then one point, which has also the normal direction. And then again, I want to copy the instancing. So I'm going to add an attribute instance. And then in Unreal, I'm going to go grab in my pad. So that is also done. So adding a frame here. And this can then be connected here with the instances as well. So let's just save this and test this in game. Now I've rebuilt my tool and we can see that we have walls placed around here on the side. So that's really nice done. And we also have here at the bottom these cliffs. So these are all individual uh, prefabs or blueprints in this case. I also notice that there are some cases where the tool is not filling up nicely. And I'm guessing I have not set up all the bind tiles properly, so I might missed a few. But overall, it's giving us a quite nice result. So in this case, we can still play around with the seed. So if you want a new layout for our level, you can just drag the slider. And then in a few moments later, we're going to have a new level. So as you see here. So overall, the tool is doing a nice job. Only need to just quickly go to the bank tile set and fix that issue. So now in here, I fixed the issue with the rank tile set. So I just missed one piece and then it just showed up empty. So now that's in order. So that was it for this video. We polished it a bit more. So we placed some walls all around. We added some lava and some cliffs and so on. So when just pressing play, I can play my level. So you can check out how everything is placed, how it feels. And if you're not happy, we can play around with these seed values and so on, or plug in other wave function collapse images and so on. So that was it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching.